Hey guys, welcome to another episode of LJ's Garage. And I know you're probably sick and tired of seeing the Grand Cherokee L. Well, I'm not. I do really enjoy this thing. And I am really excited to finally be inside of, weird phrasing, the V8 version of the Cherokee L. And I know a lot of people don't think they're for sale yet or that they haven't hit the markets quite yet, but they actually are available. So stay tuned, because I'm gonna give you guys a quick little tour of this one. But this one is an Overland, so I'm not gonna go too far into the depths with this one. This is more of a driving experience between the V6 and the V8. Just a quick little thing to answer some questions, share some of the thoughts that I have with this specific engine. If you don't know, this is a 5.7 liter V8. No turbos, none of those things. But it does make 360 horsepower and about 390 foot-pounds of torque. If you're looking for a more in-depth tour of this, I did spend time with a Grand Cherokee L in the Summit trim and the Limited trims. And so I do have two videos on those. Be sure to check those out if you are curious. At the end of this one, though, I will give a quick little walk around of this specific Overland trim and some of the cool bells and whistles that this one has to offer. Feels good. And that was only about 60% throttle. I can tell you already that if you like that torque, you want the V8. If you don't need all that and you care about just a little bit of an improved fuel economy, then you are gonna wanna stick with the V6. Transmission's the same, it's the eight speed automatic. And I'm gonna take my hat off to Jeep as I always say because I love the tuning they've done with this transmission. Back when they used to have the old five speed, it just wasn't enough to get this thing moving out of its own way. But the V6 with this automatic transmission does a great job of holding its own, especially in the arena with the uh, V8. And before I get any further, if you're new to the channel, consider hitting that subscribe button if you like to talk Jeeps, Grand Cherokees, all sorts of different cars, because LJ likes them all. V6 tows 6,200 pounds. The V8, you're looking 7,200 pounds. So the towing difference isn't that dramatic. I mean, a 1,000 pounds is quite a bit. That's a whole nother, like, two jet skis. But when it comes to moving people, I feel like there's it's almost a wash. Like, you won't notice the weight difference and the performance difference between the V6 and the V8 in terms of just everyday driving. Um, so I would say only if you know you're gonna be doing some towing and regularly have this thing packed with all three rows, then it makes sense. It feels good, it does. And the 5.7 makes a lot of sense with the Grand Cherokee just in general. When it comes to Dodge Jeep products, I mean, it's a strong motor. For the most part, these are solid. I'm gonna go ahead and flip this into sport mode. And the thing with sport mode is it actually really does change this thing because Jeep has tried their best to tune this thing in normal mode for gas mileage. As much as they can, they try to improve the fuel economy on this thing. So when you put it in sport, it shifts a lot later. It lets those RPMs climb and it's just a, it's healthy 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 there's just a lot of good with this and i think a lot of people will end up liking the v8 more than the v6 because it has more character personality oomph but the thing i've realized since doing all these videos is there's two different types of buyers there's the what can this thing offer me as far as everyday comforts and amenities and then there's the people that care about the driving experience I feel like at this point you know which one of those categories you fit into simple as that Driving with the paddle shifters, fun. Granted, I'm stuck in traffic, so I got to deal with this for a little bit, but downshifts are quick, upshifts are freaking slick, quick slick. And let me just take a moment to say that this suspension is just so nice. I've got all sorts of praise that I could give to the air ride suspension that Jeep puts on their vehicles. This is... It's a blessing to drive this thing. I wish you guys could hear this Macintosh sound system because it's it's A1. A1. It feels like a better thrilling driving experience. You look back and yes, you have a third row and I've got the seats popped up right now. So you're like, oh, third row boring stuff, but it's not like driving a minivan. Let's just put it that way. It's a lot more fun than driving a minivan. Another thing that I want to mention is that you've got a, three different modes for the electronic power steering. Okay, okay. 
could house, couldn't concentrate for a second because this thing is quick, rightfully so. You've got three different modes for your electronic power steering and you could set it to normal, sport, and if comfort is the other one, the boring one. But in sport and all that stuff, it's a hair tighter, but it's not that much of a difference that I think anyone will actually even touch those things. It's really, really not noticeable to me. But what is, is the difference between shifting yourself with these paddle shifters and letting the automatic transmission do it. And the one problem I had with the old generation is the downshifts were kind of hit or miss. Sometimes it would be right on the money. The other times it would be like, eh, oh, eh, oh, I don't know which one to go to. I don't know what gear to downshift to, blah, blah, blah. But this, it's actually pretty smart. It did all the math that it needed to to actually make things happen pretty quick. I'm impressed. I might have said in my last video that the V6 isn't that big of a deal versus the V8, but when you get on this V8, it might be a lot of it's just the sound, which this is quiet. I'll give you guys some revs here in a little bit, but it is quiet, but it's way better sounding than the V6. I just love this. You hear this nice rumble of the V8 and you turn on your seat massagers and heated seat and just, oh man, if you're old like myself, it's nice to have those heated seats because, whew, those back pains, I tell you, they sneak up on you. Braking on this, and it's nice and sharp. I think the brakes are designed just right for this size. And I didn't do the math on the weight difference between the regular Grand Cherokee and the L, but I'll go ahead and put those numbers down here. And you guys can kind of see that maybe having the V8 for the extra weight might be worth it, but it might not be. So once I see those numbers myself, I guess I'll know. The short little drive I took on the highway, uh, just like two exits and it felt good. The V6 also felt good though, because most people don't drive these aggressively, especially when you have you know, kids and whatever you put in that third row, animals. I don't know what else there is after those two, but let's just say you're driving around with things that are important and of value. You're not gonna be driving around pretty aggressively, but I like that this is just a hair smidge better than the V6. If you have any other questions on the driving experience, be sure to drop them in the comment section below. But special thank you to Performance Jeep for letting me actually take this thing out for a spin because it's been really hard to find one of these with a V8. Really, the whole automotive market right now, finding a car of spec the way you want is actually pretty tricky. So hats off to them for having two or three of these on their lot. They move pretty fast. So if you want a V8, order one now. And I'm not a Jeep salesperson. I'm just saying if you want one, get on it because you're going to be waiting months otherwise and maybe even like six months to a little bit longer than that if you're not quick. I guess I should remember that I'm filming and not enjoying a nice massage from my 2021 Grand Cherokee L Overland. It's nice. It's very nice. Blind spot monitoring is good. Lane keep assist is good. This is a very well-equipped SUV. And the third row SUV market is very competitive and it just continues to become more and more competitive. So for, the, for me, the fact that Jeep can hold their own in it, nice. And they didn't just do another Durango and call it good. No offense to the Durango, I do like the Durango but it's just something different about the Grand Cherokee. A little bit biased. I drive one. Now let me show you guys around the inside of this thing in a really, really fast, very fast, fast, quick, quick, quick way. This is your view from the driver's standpoint. You've got your Uconnect system. You've got a very nice steering wheel. You've got your lane departure settings there. You've got your adaptive cruise control settings there. On the left hand side this adjusts all your menus so you can see there you've got a nice display which you can change in all sorts of different ways ta-da ta-da if you look there you can kind of see it maybe not really but right up there in the front you can kind of see that heads-up display macintosh sound system look at the attention to detail on this door panel you see you got massage seats you've got your window controls lighting controls in your center console, this is where you've got your different drive modes, and you can see you've got pretty much all the four-wheel drive options, so rock, sand, mud, all that, 
flip down one time, that's how you get in sport mode. You've got the automatic brake hold, you've got your four wheel drive low. Then you've got your air ride suspension controls there, your hill descent controls. This is your shift knob, so if you're not used to that, that's what it is now. Let's take a look at this Uconnect system. You'll see that if you go to media, this is where you would have your Android Auto, Apple CarPlay. If you go into comfort, you've got your dual climate control settings in here. And because this is an Overland, I'll show you guys in a second, you do get quad zone climate control. But taking a look at this, you've got your little sliders, which make everything nice and easy, right? Well, there you go, sliders that make everything nice and easy. If you go into your seats, you'll see right here, you've got heated, cooled, heated steering wheel. And then go into massage, you click that, and then this is what's happening to my body right now. It's amazing and epic. The passenger seat is also amazing and epic. You go into vehicle, I'll show you guys a couple of things in here. You got your night vision reminders. And if you guys want, I can show you guys the night vision. It's pretty cool. It's your electronic power steering, hill start assist, your tire fill assist, which again, the tire fill assist, I said in another video, whenever you're off-roading and doing all that stuff, let's say you just have an air pump and you are filling it up, it'll go ahead and beep whenever you're at the desired PSI. To home, you can see you got your maps, you can do the split screen setup there. Let's go to vehicle, controls, so we're in the control section. You can do your mirror dimmers from here. If you come up top, you can see you got a camera right there. So it's nice and electric and fancy and modern. I love that. Controls for your sunroof, which is really nice. Let's get back here. You see your third row, third row headrest fold. If you look back there, I'm gonna push it, bam. So let's get back to here. You've got your fam cam. Let's hit that. You can see what everybody's doing in the back. That's a really nice thing to have. Go here, forward facing camera. Look at that. And it does have a washer on that spray. You got this other view for your back camera. You can hit your surround camera and you get this really nice view as well. And a couple different options to what you wanna see on your camera. So we'll close out a camera. And that's a lot of the cool things that you can find in there. Come down here, you've got manual buttons for the same climate control settings in there. We'll go ahead and turn this off and we'll hop in the back. You can see you got your captain's chairs, which make getting in and out really easy. And then if you're strange and you wanna get in and out this way, you can just push this, slide that forward. And now you've got access to your rear seats, which are nice and roomy. And I'll get back there and show you guys what it looks like when they recline. You can see them reclining there. Look at all that space that you get. Pretty convenient. And here's where your rear occupants can actually control the quad zone climate control as well as they get heated seats and some charge ports. You get your power lift gate. You can see plenty of room inside. You got controls for all your seats right here. Thank you guys so much for checking out yet another video in LJ's Garage. Be sure to hit that like button, comment button, subscribe button, all of that good stuff, and I will be sure to catch you guys on the next episode. I look forward to talking more about this with you guys in the comment section.